to define additive manufacturing, I think we have to think about what we've been doing so far before additive started. Uh, we've been doing subtractive manufacturing. Basically, we would like have these kind of shapes, very rough, and then we come in with a subtractive method like machining and the CNC machining, for example, and then uh, come and carve out the real shape. In additive manufacturing, we're depositing matter exactly where we want in 3D space and that allows us to make more complicated shapes right away and more intricate shapes as well. So the 3D printer takes um, a collection of metal powders and melts them using a really high power laser and it moves the laser around in all different positions so that pool of molten metal slowly starts to build up layer by layer and as you're doing that you can make really complex geometries or make any shape that you're really looking to make um, out of materials that might be hard to work with otherwise. This technology is super useful for uh, a ton of industries. Aerospace is the, the first one that comes to mind. For biomedical side, we can customize parts for our customers or, or patients. For example, they go take a, like, a CT scan and we can 3D print something that is exactly of their bone shape and that's like customized for them and that, and that could be done very quickly. When we, we print conventional materials that we know really well and you compare it, its performance, its mechanical performance, along the build direction, so the direction in which you've been adding matter, um, the materials performs way better than its forged counterpart. It's stronger and also more ductile, meaning that you can uh, extend it to a very high amount before it breaks. And usually in material science, you, you can either design a very uh, stretchable material or a very strong material. And here it's stronger and also more stretchable. So what, what you would um, typically see along other directions, right? So perpendicular to the direction in which you've been building the material, it doesn't perform so well. Um, and we call this anisotropy and overcoming this, this uh, anisotropy is a big challenge that we're tackling in our group. But in traditional manufacturing materials, even for example like rod or cast, and uh, even in the same chemical compositions, their microstructure is different after we 3D print that. So even if it, is, it has exact same chemical composition, we, have, we can have improved mechanical properties and that is uh, governed by the very small scale uh, features, that's what we call like microstructures. If for a traditional manufacturing process, a huge amount of energy input is needed to take the machine from a original billet form to the final product. But with additive manufacturing, you're able to start with the powder and produce the final product immediately, which means there's a lot less wasted time and energy um, during the manufacturing process, which is uh, hugely important for the coming years where you know, energy resources will be tough to come by. Now with additive manufacturing and it, the advent of these new manufacturing techniques, the market for additive manufacturing is increasing. It's already huge, several billion dollars per year. So it's, it's really very big. Um, and I think it's very critical to train the next generation of physical metallurgists.